very good morning i am neeraj kumar and today i am going to discuss the logic to find factorial of a positive integer uh it is the product of all numbers from 1 to n it can be obtained by using successive products that is multiplication of all the numbers from 1 to n 1 2 3 4 and so on. Please note that factorial of 0 is 1 and factorial of a negative integer is not defined. If uh, a variable n is 6, then the factorial of n will be product of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So let's start with the logic the key points that we have to think before writing the program are as follows uh, number one whether to solve this problem loop is required what are the variables required for the program data types of the variable what should be the initial value of the variable what should be the test condition? Whether loop variable should be incremented or decremented? And at last, what to do if negative number is entered by the user? Let's continue with the logic. Uh, the first point is about whether uh, loop is required for a problem or not. Let's take n as 5, which is a smaller value, and calculate the factorial. So, to calculate the factorial and display it, we have to write print of statement percent is z, 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 4 and 5. So, this will display the factorial of 5. But what if the value of n is increases? and it becomes something like 20 or 25. In that case, we have to write statement like print up percentage d1 into 2 into uh, 25, up to 25. So it will, it is a long statement. So it is, cannot, it cannot be considered as a good programming practice. And the other disadvantage of this type of programming is that it will fix the program that is if it is written to find factorial of 25 we cannot find factorial of 24 using the same program this is the bigger disadvantage so let's think about some better logic take a variable i and initialize it with 2 we need another variable to store the result let's say factorial now factorial of n can be determined using statement factorial is equal to i multiplied by i plus 1, i here is 2 and i plus 1 is 3, i plus 2 is 4, i plus 3 is 5, i plus 4 is 6 and so on up to n. So it is 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 into up to n. This statement can be simply written in the form as factorial multiplied by equal to i. It is the equivalent statement of factorial is equal to factorial multiplied by i. It means that multiply the value of i to the current value of factorial and store the result in factorial again. Next, increase the value of i say here value of i is 2 then in the next step we will increase the value and now it will become 3 then again repeat step number 1 and 2 that is again multiply it to factorial and store the result in factorial and again increment the value of i the process will continue until the value of i reaches n we know that loop is used where a block of code is repeated several times so in the previous example 
we are repeating the step again and again. So, answer to the question whether loop is required to solve the problem is yes. But by using loops, we can reduce the code length and hence it's easy to write, modify, and debug the program. Along with that, we can make a program which can be used to find factorial of any given number. So, what are the variables required for the program? One variable n is required to store the value of an integer that is entered by the user. Next, the variable factorial to store factorial of the given number n. And another variable i, it is you call loop variable to run the loop. So, what are the data types of the given variable? And as n is integer, it should be of type int. Factorial uh, will store the product of n numbers. So, it must be of type integer as product of integer is an integer. So, it is of type integer. But the storage capacity of int data type is limited to 32,767. So it is a very small number. When you multiply so many numbers like factor to find factor of 13, it will be insufficient. So we need some uh, data type with, sto with having storage capacity uh, more than this 32,000. So in this place, we can consider long or unsigned long. Unsigned long can store positive values only and it will having double the storage capacity of long data type. And finally, the variable i, it is the loop variable and it will be vary in the range of 2 to n. So, we will discuss about it later. It is of type integer as it will vary in the uh, range of 2 to n, it is of type int. So, what should be the initial value of the variable? And uh, the input is provided by the user. I, it is initialized with 2. We are initializing it with 2 because uh, factorial is product of all numbers from 1 to n. But uh, multiplying it uh, any number by 1 will result in no change of value. So, we are skipping the value 1 and we are taking 2. This will save the time. And finally, factorial. It is initialized at 1. So be careful, don't initialize uh, it with 0 as it will result in no answer. So be careful, initialize it with 1. Why we are taking 1 here? Why not 2 or 3 or 4? It's because that uh, by multiplying any number by 1, there will be no effect on the result. What should be the test condition? We have to multiply all numbers from 2 to n the loop should be executed till the value of i reaches and that is i is less than and equal to n. So, value of i should be incremented or decremented. Obviously, we have to increment the value as we have to move from 2 to n. So, we have to increase n is a positive number either higher than 2 or equal to 2. So, uh, we will increment the value and it will be incremented by 1 only. What if the negative value is entered by the user? It should show an error message and exit the program. Thank you.